Hi, welcome to another Friday feature for what is the 26th of April 2023. And in this week's episode, I'm going to continue on looking at EDR tools, so event data recorder tools. In the last episode, I looked at the Tesla EDR tool and give you a walkthrough on how to acquire crash data from Tesla vehicles. Well, in this episode, I'm going to introduce you to a new tool or relatively new solution to market in the form of the lab kit that has been um, produced by a company called Collision Sciences based out of Canada and it works in tandem with their tool Crash Scan that's um, been on the market for a number of years now. So for those that aren't familiar with Crash Scan, um, this is the dongle that effectively goes into the OBD port of the vehicle and it works in tandem with their application and you set up an account and it will um, read the airbag control module of a vehicle that's been involved in a crash and they've got various support for different markets across the globe. Once it's read the airbag control module then um, you get a notification on your account with an option to be able to buy that report separately. So those people that might be familiar with um, the Bosch EDR tool, this works slightly different in the sense that there isn't any software as such other than the application and this tool. And this is a relatively cheap tool in comparison to the Bosch, Bosch CDR. However, you do have a cost implication if you want to buy the full report. And that's basically the crash scan tool. However, we want to talk about their lab kit that they've recently introduced and we've managed to get our hands on and, and test it. So this is for situations whereby you can't go to the OBD port on the vehicle because the vehicle networks have become damaged and you need to go what we would term direct to module. So again, for those people who are conversant with a Bosch CDR tool, you would be familiar with um, one of these, which is a cable that goes directly into the module itself and works with the hardware and software that's um, available through the Bosch CDR tool. You can't do that with crash scan because there are no cables as such. And that, that, this is where the lab kit comes in. So they've introduced a piece of hardware that will work in conjunction with the um, crash scan tool itself. And I'm gonna talk you through this on the bench and give you a live demo of this very shortly. Um, but I just want to explain a few principles really around how this works with regards to direct module reads. So if we look at an airbag control module, and this is one out of a Jeep Compass, it's a 2022 vehicle here in the UK. Um, this module is manufactured actually by Continental. We'll see the interface, uh, maybe if I just get a bit of light onto this. You can see all those pins that um, come out of the module itself. Now, despite there being quite a number of pins on there, there's only actually four pins that we're interested in. One is the can high, one is the can low, one is power and the other ground. And I've got this cable here, which is actually the director module cable for the um, airbag control module that I've just shown you. And if I just try and push that up to camera, can you see how we've got two pins that are live at this side in the center, and with two pins that are live at that side at the top and the bottom. So those four pins will be um, the can high, the can low, positive and ground. And the rest are just empty um, in order to facilitate that going in to the airbag control module itself. So that's the direct to module cable from the Bosch CDR tool. Don't get confused. Um, but it just highlights that all they are doing is recognizing which pins on this unit are the can high, can low, and um, positive and ground in order to get that um, unit powered up 
and communication through the can high and the can low um, wires. So, all we really need to know is which of these um, pins are the can high, can low, positive and ground, and what um, the lab kit does for um, the crash scan tool is it gives you those um, identifiers for those pins which we'll look at as I talk you through an acquisition and it is then a case of using these wires that come with the hardware just to connect into and onto the um, can high, can low, positive and ground then this comes back um, through the crash scan tool and we can get a scan using the crash scan tool itself so without further ado let's um, get this rigged up and we'll give you a walkthrough of what it looks like on the bench and how an acquisition looks okay so i've got the module on the bench with the lab kit and i'm just going to talk you through what's happening with regards to the kit itself and how it's working in order to get an acquisition outside of the vehicle so with the airbag control module and there is no power to this at the moment so i'm okay to move it around um, i've connected the jumper leads into the um, relevant pins on the connection part of the event data recorder so if i just zoom in you can see on the left hand side i've got the yellow connector going to pin five which is the fifth one along in that middle row that's going to be can high I've got the blue one going to the sixth one along, which is my can low. And then I've got my red, which is my power, going to the top right pin. And I've got the black, which is ground, going to the bottom right pin. So you do get the identified pins within the support package for the lab kit. So you don't need to worry about working, out, working them out for yourself. However, you can work them out for yourself if you have an inclination to do so. As I just change the light there, you can perhaps see, um, certainly in the center of the image there, you've got some numbers in the top right corner, which would denote the number of that pin in the top right. Similarly, there is one in the top left denoting number one. And then you will have them in the bottom left corner. Can't really make that out, I think it's 37 should be if that's 18 at the top if my maths are correct but that's the manufacturer label in the pins so you could get a wiring diagram for the vehicle and work out which is the can high and can low and the power and ground um, if you didn't have the information or it is sometimes available open source on the internet as well but Whilst I've got the camera zoomed in, if I just bring up that um, direct module lead for the um, Bosch CDR kit for this particular module, can you see how on the middle row there, the fifth hole along is darker than the rest, as well as the sixth hole along? And that's because there's some metal in there for the pin to connect to when you plug in. And similarly, at the top right, and bottom right pins for the power and ground and that is obviously then just going back into the connection port that would go back to the um, back to the Bosch kit so you could work it out if you had a cable as well for the um, direct module route on the Bosch CDR however you don't need them if you don't have them but there are alternative methods but as i say you get them as a support package in any event with a lab kit from um, collision sciences crash scan um, event data recorder tool and then these jumper wires are coming back to this what is termed as a terminal block adapter and I'm just going to open this up for you to show you the insides of it because um, it will do without me um, causing any issue to it. So I'll just open this up. Again, I'll just zoom the camera in and you can see what's going on. So in there, the wires are obviously coming back to those various different terminals, which in turn are then coming back 
to our standard OBD port. And essentially, that's how we have access to the airbag control module through that standardized format of OBD. There are two 120 ohm resistors in there, and that is to simulate uh, an in-vehicle environment for the crash scan tool to work. So you may have instances on some airbag control modules where the um, CAN lines of communication aren't used and you may use, have to use a different line of communication depending on the module and then you would use a different uh, jumper wire and um, that would still enable you to get the acquisition. So airbag control module, data is on the chip in there, we've got our lines of communication in and our power and ground in, that's coming back through the um, terminal block adapter back to this um, OBD connection port. So then we need this OBD breakout um, wire to connect to this. So this, obviously as you can see from the uh, view of it, has got 12 volt power supply coming into it here through this um, section of wire using pins 5 and 16 on the OBD port on that side. So that will just um, go back to a standard uh, plug on the other side and then to your mains power supply. And then, because it's broken out into two different OBD ports, we connect one to the terminal block adapter. So the power will be coming in to here and feeding the power um, into the airbag control module once uh, we connect that up. But then the other is then coming back to the crash scan tool itself that um, we use when we go into vehicle. And that would connect into there like so. And then we would then connect via Bluetooth to the dongle itself and we would be able to perform an acquisition in the usual way as though we were at the vehicle. So, an alternative solution. Now, what I should point out at this stage, and it's only because of the type of airbag control module we've got in this case, which is uh, this one that's come from a Jeep Compass, actually, a 2022 model year here in the UK. Um, some manufacturers have um, switched the um have switched the wiring configuration on the obd part so if you were to look up a um jeep compass on a 2022 model year within the bosch cdr lookup for example and supported list you would find that it's not actually supported for an obd um connection because the wiring configuration on their OBD ports are slightly different. So if you've not got one of these, reach out to Collision Sciences because they now provide you with a switch which enables you to interface this in between the two and switch so that you can do it via um, OBD. So um, in this particular instance, even though it's on the bench, I still have to do that. So I'm going to have to, um, that's pretending to be my vehicle side, obviously, because the airbag control module is that way. And I'll plug that in there. And then the crash scan interface goes on that side. And then because it is a Jeep and the wiring configuration is either way around, I just switch that over onto the other side. That will allow me to still get the acquisition done. Um, and it would do at the vehicle as well. Whereas if I had the Bosch CDR, um, I wouldn't. I'd have to recover the module and then do a direct uh, to module read with that tool and I'd need a cable to do it. However, the 2022 Jeep Compass here in the UK is not supported by Bosch on direct to module. So that's um, part of the reason that I'm here um, with a lab kit to get an additional solution for that particular type of vehicle. Um, that's 
about it, it is relatively straightforward and um, I'm certainly not going to um, go into it any more detail around the acquisition. Those people that are familiar with the crash scan application will know how that works. But with regards to what we need to do on the bench, that um, just about wraps up what we need to do in order to get that acquisition done outside of the vehicle and how this lab kit can um, offer you an alternative method of acquiring crash data from a vehicle that's damaged or potentially unsupported by the Bosch CDR tool. So that's the lab kit from Collision Sciences crash scan tool. Um, it is something that you may want to consider putting in your toolkit of capabilities around still being able to access airbag control module data from some vehicles that are not supported by Bosch CDR in your region and um, offers you that complementary service and solution without having to reach out to the manufacturer of the device. Um, we found it to be useful. It certainly acquired data from a unit that is not supported by Bosch CDR in the UK. And obviously with any type of crash investigation, we're going to look at that physical evidence as well to make sure the data is um, accurate and fits in with the circumstances of the collision. But it is worthy of consideration if you want to increase your capabilities around being able to recover crash data from a wider range of vehicles in your market. Okay, as ever, thanks for listening and I'll see you on the next one.